All right, welcome back. We are on part two of the Ableton tutorial. I'm Snap. What we've done in the first part is we've mixed two tracks together, one of my own, one old school one by D Block and Estefan. Now we're going to add more stuff in. Um, so I've already got my song selected. You can just drag your tunes into Ableton from um, Windows Explorer, or presumably you can do it on Mac as well. Uh, I'm dragging them from iTunes because that's where I've got my list of songs. All right, so we want another track. Let's put this one in. A bit of a sort of freestyle type track. Somewhere in between hard style, jump style, and trap. I love it. Now, I probably wouldn't actually put this in if this was a real mix, but you know, for the sake of this tutorial, it's going in. OK, so. Doing what we did in the first part, we're lining the beat marker up with the first beat. Set one 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 here. I don't think I explained what that does actually. It's pretty straightforward. Basically, that's just the first uh, part of audio, piece of audio it will play. So um, it, it's basically the start, if you know what I mean. So it won't play all this before it. As you can see, we've got those markers there we don't want. So go back to that first one. Warp straight, it's got it completely wrong. I know this track's 150. 150, we're in. Complex Pro, that's all we need. Right, okay, since we've jumped eras, um, the mastering is kind of different now. This song is really, really, really loud, and it has pretty harsh highs. So we're going to take the volume down quite a lot. I don't even really need to look. I can tell just by the nature of it. But let's have a quick go. Yeah, look at that on the side there, if you saw. That is a hot track. Let's bring that down loads. There we go. Otherwise, it's going to be too obvious when it's coming in, even if we make use of the volume automations. So let's find a good place to mix this. Hmm, do I want to mix this in the outro or the climax? Tough decisions. Alright, let's, let's so quick listen to the intro. Right, there is a melodic, melodic element in the intro, so... Even though it'll probably get hidden by the climax of the track, I don't really want to risk it, so we'll put it over the outro. Although this is half the length, so we'll have to do some fiddling around. Right, here we go. Let's see if we can find the start of the outro. There we go. Lining the tracks up. Alright, so we got those relatively well lined up. We want to drop it before the last beat. Boom, get out. Cool. Okay, what we want to do as well, cut the uh, bass completely out of the, the new track, GTFO. Gain low, out, drag it all the way down. Still sounds a little weird. Oh, 
Okay, that sounds pretty good. Um, we're going to fade this one in a little bit though, because it's a little jarring at the moment. And when it's got like those melodic buildups, if you kind of mimic the buildup with the volume, it makes it sound quite natural. So like the melody bit is sort of coming in with the volume. Right, so I quite like the way that sounds. I think we need to start bringing out this one a little bit before though. So let's go back to our mixer over here. Let's try this. I like that. Right, let's. I mean, it's not a perfect mix, but let's actually crank this one up a bit. Yeah, the mix is solid. The tracks don't go together perfectly, but what can you do? We're stuck with it now. Okay, so. What we'll do as well, we don't need all of this, it's taking up space, so if we little, click the little arrow button here, it'll minimize the channel. So I want to minimize one and two. We've got three here, GTFO. So what I want to do, I do this with a lot of my mixes actually, I want to kind of gradually get towards harder styles, so raw style, possibly even some hardcore. Um, I think so far we have sort of gone soft to hard, it's been subtle though, like this my one is pretty soft, um, and then uh, it's also sort of quite jovial <laughs> and whimsical. Um, D Block and S Fans track is a bit darker, but it's still quite soft. And then we've got this here, which is sort of in, in the middle, I guess. It's very energetic, still melodic, has sort of a dark ish tone to it, and a lot of non melodic elements. So I think we're going to go. A little harder next track. Not going to jump straight into raw. We're going to find something sort of in between. And uh, here's one I made earlier. Illusion, are you ready? Pretty damn nice track. Okay. So again, I know this is 150. So click at the start. You know the drill by now. Straight. It's got it wrong as always. 150. Boom. Look. At this though, it is a sausage, <laughs> a square sausage, and it's going to be, it's probably the loudest track I've got in, in my little collection here, so let's give that a play and see where it's peaking. Yeah, bring it down. All right, so now we've got this. Let's have a quick listen to the intro. Well, the end of the intro, anyway. Cool. Now let's find a good mix out point. <laughs> Damn, son, where'd you find this? We can't mix it with the little trap bit. Plus, I wouldn't want to. I love that part. It's pretty awesome. So let's go to the next bit with the jump style kick. And it's non-melodic, sort of. 
I mean, it has tonal elements. Well, the kick is tonal for starters, but eh, it sounds like a good place to mix out. Let's line the intro up with the beginning of the outro. Um, see, I wish I'd actually taken the time to get the grids right at the start because we wouldn't have to do all this faffing it, just like snap into place. All right, let's have a quick listen. Okay, cool. That sounds actually really good without even doing much, but where do we want to get rid of it? Okay, so we want to get rid of that part here, so make two points, bring the second one down on the volume. I like that. I'm going to show you something actually, because we prefer it to go out gradually. I'm going to use a filter to do this in this instance because I think it'll sound cool. You've probably played with a filter in your door. Well, you, I'm sure most of you know what it is, but basically it just cuts uh, frequencies below whatever you specify. So we'll drag the auto filter onto channel 2 here. It should just be in your audio effects. Do, do, do. Here we go. Select auto filter as you would select mixer or whatever else. Uh, it's currently on. I mean, we can keep it on for the entire thing, but um, it might affect the sound a little bit. Let's have a quick listen. That isn't affecting the sound in a noticeable way, so we'll just leave it on for the entire track. I wouldn't recommend doing that with most effects, though. Um, right, so here we go. What we want to do select the frequency and um, this is sort of a, a automating a frequency sweep so all right so we want it that's where it goes out put a point there put one you know a few beats before we'll just bring this second one down a little bit and that will cut out all the highs up to 2.6 kilohertz, I believe. Yeah. So we'll listen to that on its own. Yeah. Familiar sound, right? Yeah, my technical explanations of stuff like that are not too good, but. Uh, as long as you know what it does, it, you don't have to know. I was thinking how it sounds, I should say you don't have to know the exact details of how it works. Okay, right, so that's sounding pretty good so far. I think what we need to do now is go and quickly check to see how jarring it is when this track comes in, because it literally at the moment just cuts in at the beginning. So we'll listen from like the end of um, the last drop bit. It's actually not too bad, but it is kind of noticeable, so we'll start the volume off a little lower. Put a mark there. Um, there, yeah, should be alright. Should bring it down to like five. Okay. 
All right, that yeah, that sounds good. Um, I would prefer to take the lows out though, just because it can cause clashes. It actually sounds fine there, but I just force a habit. <laughs> Much better. It's kind of kept it more in the background. So what we'll do as well, while that filter comes up there, we'll go to the EQ3 gain low. We'll bring this up. Bring the bass up as the filter's going out. There we go. I'm happy with that. Let's minimize. Bring that out a bit. For some reason. It always cuts them off. Um, I'm not sure why it does that, but it's not a huge problem. Okay, I think what we'll do is we'll stop part two there, and uh, we're back part three. I'm going to take it harder. We're going to go into some raw style and I think some hardcore. I'll show you BPM changes in the next um, part. So stay tuned. I'll be back with you soon.